Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'm here today to talk to you about the relationship of Ohm's Law in a series circuit and in a parallel circuit. Okay, what I'd like to do now is really start to take on a simple series circuit. We have a bit of an understanding of what's going on within the circuit. You have another way of relating to it. Just be the electron, if you will, running down the wire as fast as you can to help you understand uh, this information. Because it can be abstract. It is abstract. You can't see the electron, but boy, can you feel the current flow if you put your finger in the wrong place. And I don't want you to do that because that hurts. I've drawn a simple series circuit that has three resistors. And I want to start to exercise and prepare us for what's coming, which is combination circuits. And that's when we take series and we join it with parallel. And that means we have many things going on at once in a circuit. So to get a little discipline up front, to have some good technique as you start to learn this, I think is to your advantage. If it feels like it's overkill, you don't want to draw, you don't want to create what I'm going to do with you, which is a table to track information, that's fine. Because at this level, generally, we don't need to. I'm here to help you get organized. Half of the battle is just getting organized and understanding what you're playing with. So I'm going to go over here. I just want to talk to you about what you know. We know Ohm's Law. And we know three different ways to think about Ohm's Law. That voltage is indeed equal to current times resistance. We also know that current is equal to, if we transpose this formula, voltage divided by resistance. And we also know that resistance in a series circuit, it's different when you get to parallel. That's a little more unique. But in, if you will, um, a, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because we're just talking over each resistor. But resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. And then when we get to a parallel circuit, I'll expand on this. So basic Ohm's law over here to help us. Now, I want you to think about Ohm's law like this. If I knew two of these, I could always figure out the third piece. And I think of Ohm's law as kind of the three-piece puzzle. As long as I know two pieces of what I call that three-piece puzzle, we can solve for the missing piece. If I know current and I know the resistance for that resistor, I can multiply them together and get the voltage. Two pieces to what I call that three-piece puzzle. If we know voltage and we know the resistance and we do the division, we get current. If we know the voltage and we know the current and we do the division, we can determine the resistance. So basic, if you will, Ohm's law. Now what I'd like to do is get organized. I have a resistive network that has given me some information and what we need to do is find, if you will, some of the missing information. The first thing I want to do is start to exercise you with what we call redraws. Let's redraw this circuit. And I am going to start to stretch this out and redraw over here to my right. If I take, remember this is just wire. And if I take and I pull this wire and I redraw it, we're going to leave, if you will, the source. And those negatively charged particles will come down the wire. And the first thing that they hit is, R1. And on the bottom end of R1, that wire continues, and we hit R2. And then as we continue to move on, we have R3. That is in series with the other two resistors. And then the electrons finally get to where they need to go. So if I draw the current flow for this, you will see here that current flows this direction, continues to flow over R2, continues to flow over R3, and goes back to the source. And when I pulled and I did something called the redraw, and let me just write that up. This is just something that we simply refer to as a redraw. Again, you can see it goes through R1, goes through R2, goes through R3, and goes back to the source. So let's write up some other things that we know about a series circuit. In a series circuit, we know that current is constant. There is only one and only one current path or current flow 
in this circuit. Now another thing that I like to advise you to do, especially as your circuits get more complex, is to start to create a table. And I will be way more formal with this. I'm going to be more formal when we get into combination circuits. But I want to start to get us thinking like this. So we do a redraw, and I usually refer to this as step one. Redraw your circuit so you can look at it and think about it. And the next thing I advise my students to always do, and I refer to this as step two, is draw a, or create a table. In mathematics and in the sciences, we always create a table when we have more than, if you will, one thing going on at a time in a problem. It helps us stay organized. It helps us know where we are so we don't get lost. And we prepare ourselves to answer any question that is offered to us. So when we create a table for Ohm's, in use for Ohm's law, you're just going to create, if you will, a simple table. And what you'll put across the top here is voltage. We're going to track voltage we're going to track current, and we're going to track resistance. And then for some of you, you are now in a position to also track power over each component. But I'm going to focus in on basic Ohm's law. And now what we need to do is we have to, on the side here, going horizontally, we want to track information. We want to track the voltage, current, and resistance over R1. We want to do the same over R2. We want to do exactly the same over R3. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit, because one other thing that we need to track, if you will, is total. So I'm just extending this down. Because I also want to keep track in my circuit of the circuit totals. And that means what's the total voltage? What's the total current? What's the total resistance in this network? Now, one thing I tell my students is when you create a table, put into the table with a pen, because it's not going to change or vary the, what's given. Meaning, what does that teacher or what does that classroom environment offer you, if you will, and give you regarding that circuit, the information that's given? And then what we will do in another color pen, I'm going to use red for that, and I advise all my students, use a pencil. Pencils, you can erase if you make a mistake, and things don't get too messy, so you lose sight of what you're working with. So in pen, I'm going to put the information that's given. This will not change or vary. They tell me something. They tell me source voltage is 100 volts. That's the total voltage in the circuit. Also what I know is the resistance over R1, over R2, as well as R3. Let's put it into our table in our ink. R1, we have uh, 25 ohms. R2 has 50 ohms. R3 has 25 ohms. And this is all that's given for us to start to now figure out the rest of the circuit and do analysis. If I go over here, the game is, where do we start? And what I like to teach you is how to read a table. Tables will give you information as to where I can start in this process. And if you go uh, left to right, horizontally through here, because we're looking at Ohm's law, which has three pieces, you need to have two pieces of what I refer to as that three-piece puzzle. I don't have enough information to work with. I don't have enough information here because I need two pieces to figure out the third piece. And the same goes here. So according to my table right now, horizontally, I don't have enough information to work with. So the next thing you say is, I wonder if I have enough information going down this way. And when you're learning to read tables, I want you to notice, in a table, if you have everything but one piece looking down vertically, math is talking to you, telling you, hey, this is where we're going to start. I have everything here but one piece of information. Again, math is saying, I bet this is where you're going to start. And it is, in this case, where I'm going to start to do my calculations. Because we have enough information to figure out resistance total. Now, resistance total in a series circuit adds up. So if you remember, I can figure out total resistance by adding up R1 plus R2 plus R3. This is where we're going to start 
and our table helped us think like this. So if we add this up, 25 plus 50 plus 25 more, we have a total, a resistance total here of 100 ohms. And if you're playing it out, of course, all I'm doing is I'm figuring out the resistance total by taking 25 ohms plus 50 ohms plus 25 ohms. And that gave us our resistance total of 100 ohms. But if you use the table, you can do some of this as you're flowing the problem and keep track within your table. Just pay attention to your numbers and try not to make too many mistakes. And also, if you're doing it in pencil, do you see how if I did do a mistake here, I'd be able to quickly erase and correct that mistake. Well, now, if you look at the table with me, we have two pieces to what I call the three-piece puzzle. And wouldn't it be nice to know the total current in the circuit? It is a series circuit. And total current is going to give me the current flow through each of these resistors because it takes on, if you will, the behavior of the series circuit. It has one and only one current flow path, and it is the same through each of these resistors. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and we're going to continue to work our problem. Looking at the table, how do we figure out total current? To figure out total current, we need to have two pieces of that three-piece puzzle. We have it. We know that the voltage divided by the resistance will give us total current. So total current here simply equals 100 divided by 100. And when you're taking and dividing volts by ohms, you are now, if you will, talking about current, which is measured in amperage. So 100 divided by 100 is 1, and we're now talking amps. So I have 1 amp here. And what do we know about a series circuit? Current is the same throughout the circuit. So 1 amp is true for all three of our resistors. There is one full amp going over each resistor. And now we have two pieces to that three-piece puzzle, and we can figure out the voltage drop over R1, the voltage drop over R2, as well as the voltage drop over R3. So let's do that. I have, to figure out voltage, I take I times R. And I've set this table up so it's an easy way of remembering, if you will, Ohm's law as well where E equals I times R. Let's go ahead and fill this in. 1 times 25 gives us 25, and now we're talking volts. 1 times 50 gives us 50 volts. And 1 times 25 here gives us 25 volts. And what else do we know about a series circuit? We can start to check our work. We know that the Voltage drop over R1 plus the voltage drop over R2 plus the voltage drop over R3 better equal the total voltage, which is 100 volts. So let's check and see if we did this correctly. 25 plus 50 is 75 plus 25 more is a total of 100 volts. Looks good. In fact, now you have all the information you need to answer any question that might be uh, asked of you from any of your worksheets. It might ask you this. What's the voltage drop over R2? And our answer would be 50 volts. What's the total current for the circuit? One amp. What's the voltage drop over R3? 25 volts. So you have a very nice, clean way to reference all information.